sound of morning. Fordrick, will you play this toy for me later? Sure, just tell me when. Fordrick, take that animal wheel that I set to a rooster and fly outside by the window and play that sound. That might convince her it really is morning. Good idea. I'll give it a shot. is hideous. Look on the bright side, Mona. At least she's already dead. This will be useful. I'll take it. Poor fellow. He really lost his head. I think he's a magically created golem. Somebody made him and sent him here for a reason.
It may not be a perfect fit, but it's the only head we've got. How perfectly dreadful. This body has no sense of fashion. Stop whining! One more word out of you and you'll be spending the next 20 years of your miserable existence in the bottom of that privy at the closest Spanish restaurant I can find. Let's see if this will work. It better, after all the crap we went through. Ooh, pretty. Yeah, but I hate purple. I'm more partial to pink. Oh, this is just great. Now I'm fat. Yippee, it worked! Go forth to the boathouse. There you will see the ghost of Shrouty holding the oars for the last boat. I want you to get those oars from Shrouty using any means necessary. Well, apparently I have to do whatever you say. So, all right. I work for a witch. Now I'm taking orders from a bee. I heard that. You were supposed to. Look, just give me the oars. It's good. It's violence. Fortunately, I like violence. Look at He got the boat. <laughs> You can keep the oars now for all the good they will do you. <laughs> oh, how sweet! I can see a handsome young man with a lantern on his boat. He's quietly rowing across the serene calm waters of Lake Fog. It looks as though he has a rose clenched between his teeth. I wonder if he's on his way to meet his mistress for a secret midnight run th Oh. Oh my. Never mind. Huh? What happened? Think he ate him. should do the trick. Maybe not as nice as a boat, but at least it floats. Grab those oars, Mona. It's time for the maiden voyage of the SS Dirtnap. Mona, make his day. Keep going, Mona. I think you got him on the ropes. I can't seem to hit him. He moves way too fast now.
little trick. After he swallowed that ice, he thickened up. It was easy to spray him this time. Are you sure we need to bring all this stuff? Of course, you idiot! We must be fully prepared! I am an expert on the Nosferatu! And one thing I know for sure is that the undead don't just sail up to you and present themselves. Hello, Vizel! Do you know a good place to land our copper? Uh, our pleasure cruiser? I don't know! Try over there around that point! Oh, okay! Thank you! Toodaloo! Right, whatever! What was I saying? The, the undead don't just sail up to you? Right. They cherish their lairs immensely and never willingly give them up. One thing I know for sure, this brood of the barons, this Mona, will be there waiting for us, getting ready to fiercely defend her crypt with every ounce of undead energy she possesses. She will never willingly leave that castle. We made it, Frodrik! Who would have thought that crossing a simple lake would be such a pain in the ass? <sighs> well, off to Paris. Wait, wait, wait. What are you going to do? Walk there? I was thinking a train. A train. Even if we could child, catch a train, there's the small child, problem of you only being night. able to travel at night. Come to that me. would have to be an extremely fast train to make it to the next major city. Child, child of the night. Come to think of it. Why are you not walking towards me? Aren't you listening? Do not make me count to three. One, two, three. Expanded yeah. drag Mr. coefficient. Adjust the gravity. I'll come to you. Then, of course, get higher. Yeah. Finally. Mona, wake up, Mona. Come, child. Come inside where it is warm and safe. I have been waiting for you. We, oui, mistress. Oh, I see. You want your fortune told. Good idea. And see if you can find out what's going to happen on next week's episode of Bats of Our Lives. Well, hello, my dearest Mona de Lafitte. Come in and sit down. We meet at last. Sorry to bother you, madame. I don't know, but I had the weirdest feeling that came over me. It compelled me to seek you out for some mysterious reason. Yes, yes, you learned that I have that effect on people. But goodness gracious, I am being rude. I know all about you, but you don't know me at all. Forgive me. I am called... The great Madame Strigoi, knower of all things better left unknown. Why have you summoned me here? I know your plight, and I know how best to prepare you for your journey home. Really? You know how to get me back to Pelly? Okay, listen very carefully, for I'm only going to say this as many times as you ask me to. First, you need your coffin to sleep in. Do you have it here? No. And what do you mean I need a coffin to sleep in? I thought Shroudy was being, well, uh, just being weird. Making me sleep in there when I had a perfectly good bed up in my boudoir. Besides, no self-respecting opera star would sleep in a coffin. It's absurd. Well, this opera star is going to have to. Now wake up, girl. You need a coffin to sleep in every night or you will die. You will die. Capiche? Well, I suppose... I do, but I'm not happy about it. Being a vampire isn't about being happy. Listen, child, in life stuff, uh, stuff just happens that we don't always like. We just have to get over it and move on as best we can. Besides, living the life, uh, uh, unlife of a vampire can be very rewarding and just as fulfilling as uh, real life. Trust me, child, I know. You are strong. I have seen it. You'll be just fine. And I'll guide you all the way. Now, where is your coffin? At the lake shore, where we left it. Uh-oh. Better go get it now. Constable Otto just passed here a few minutes ago on his nightly patrol. I think he said something about investigating a scream and looking out for two strangers reported skulking hereabouts. 
Hurry and go get it and bring it back. ASAP! Hello, sir. May I talk to you for a moment? Yes, but only for a few minutes. I am Constable Otto Van Pelt, and I'm in the middle of serious investigation. Some very strange things have been happening around here lately. Can you tell me about those weird events happening lately? Yes. I got reports from cottages nearby of two men who have been skulking around shoreline and along the road. Then we heard reports from all over of horrible scream that echo throughout the valley. So, I was assigned to investigate, and about 100 yards down the shore, I found, well, what appeared to be Baron Shroudy von Hiefer's clothing. And it smelled awful. Noxious vapors were emanating from the clothes. It was quite a sight. And last night, I discovered the coffin sitting on the shore with two oars in it. It is mighty strange. You'll have to pardon me, ma'am. I I best be getting back to my investigation. I haven't much time before Luke Crane gets wind of it and muscles the case out from under me. He's always trying to be in the spotlight. What are you doing with that boat? Looking for clues. By the dirt residue I found in the coffin, it looks as though someone kept putting dirt in it, and then someone else kept dumping it out. Also, by impressions left behind, it looks like someone, a woman, judging by the shape of the imprint, slept here every night and had a bat for a companion. by the smell. Bats have a distinctive odor that is hard to wash out. Tell me about it. Yes. Bats are popular pets in Draxylvania for some reason, though I personally think they're bad luck. Why is that? Because anyone who adopts one seems to come down with spontaneous anemia right away. Plus, bats are not loyal pets. As soon as their owners die of this anemia, they fly away and find another family. But in Draxylvania, you get used to these things. Can you deduce from looking at the coffin? Well, the woman who slept here wore black and purple, judging from the fibers I found, and had black hair. And the coffin owner's name was written on a tag on the inside of the lid, a Mona de Lafitte. Sounds like a French name. I think popular in the south of France, near Calais. Where are you from, may I ask? Calais? That's not in the south. Shh, idiot. Oh, Right. Where? Quebec. Where? Belgium. Quebec. Well, which is it, Quebec or Belgium? Uh, Belgium, Quebec. A small colony of Belgium, Ians, just east of Montreal. And I didn't get your name. Vona Fay the Feet. Vona lay my feet. No, I mean, come again. Vona May. Whitney. Uh, Whitney. Uh, Dark Lake. My name is Whitney Dark Lake of the, uh... Belgium, Quebec, Dark Lakes. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you, too. Well, if you see any tall French women about with a bat as pet, let me know so I can ask her a few questions, okay? He's got to be putting us on. Shh. Yes, Constable. I certainly will. Can you tell me about the nearest towns? Well, there is Vlad's Landing down the road behind you, and beyond that near the border is the quaint village of Gothard Falls. Up the river are the towns of Ravenhaven, Howling Oaks, Batsburg, and the new retirement community of Scarlet Meadows. Tell me about Vlad Landing. Yes, it's a hilly town located just down the road there and serves as a hub of commerce for Lake Varg. Hmm? The Draxylvania Tourist Board, a powerful entity in these parts, almost got Burgermeister to change the town name. To what? Super Happy Funville. The board thought it might increase tourism. I like the runner-up name myself. Let me guess. Autotopia? No, but I like that. (laughs) No, the runner-up name was Don't Swim in the Water, the Lake Monster Will Get You, Ville. In the end, all parties agreed to leave as is. It was for the best. Tell me about Garford Falls. It's just the cutest little town built on a bridge overlooking the falls. Quite spectacular. But the local baron appointed the most corrupt skirt chaser as burgermeister... Wilhelm Winton. They say he has charisma and can make deals better than anyone. Villagers seem to like him, but no woman is free from his tentacles for long. 
I sure hope the recall campaign succeeds. If he is a good leader, why do you hate him so much? <laughs> oh my! I think I asked the wrong thing. Are you okay? No, he's fine. It was a long time ago. High school. <laughs> and I had... No, stop him. that's okay. This crush on any time at all. She had beautiful braids and long blonde hair. She smelled so good. Oh, Lord. So we have to go now and... Uh... And then he came along with his sweet-talking ways and mesmerizing stares. Do something. Uh, oh, my. I feel faint. Yeah, that's it. I'm passing out. I'm going to be sick. Not far from the truth. Really? Do you need a doctor? Um, no. Suddenly I feel a lot better. Tell me about the retirement community of Scarlet Meadows. Oh, that is a strange place. It used to be the castle of Maud the Impaler. But then the ghoulish society took it over, renovated it, and opened it up as retirement community for Draxylvania nobility. Huh? They have golf course, geyser heated pools, and everything. Thing is, they only like to golf at night, and the retirees really don't look that old. But I hear the place is very, very nice, and the healthcare is great. No one gets sick. Can you tell me about the graveyard down the road? The Draxylvania graveyard and picnic grounds? Another bright idea by the tourist board. They thought by throwing in some table swings and grills, tourists would flock there by the droves to eat corn on the cob while sitting on top of great-grandmother. <laughs> and they didn't? Actually, they did, but only at night for some reason. Moonlight picnics are all the rage this year. Have you seen two men rowing out on the lake? I think I saw some men in a boat not too long ago fighting with the lake monster. I thought I saw them throw vials of water at it that caused the monster to sink. Then they rowed up to the Baron's castle. Must be guests. When the Baroness was alive, they had guests all the time. Never saw any of them leave, though. Oh, well. Who do you suppose those two men were? Well, a woodsman who reported seeing them said they were acting funny, like they were up to something. And they had lots of strange sorts of equipment, each with a symbol of an eye in the middle of a pentagram. I think they might have been meteorologists or lawyers. for now. Okay, back to my investigation. I went back to get it, but we were too late. Constable Otto was there. I guess it's time that you had this. Vampires for Domkopf. It has everything a budding vampire like you needs. Read it and learn it all. It tells everything you need to know about your new vampire powers, as well as your many vampire restrictions. It has rules, flow charts, pie charts, pie recipes, and good advice for vampires of all types. Thank you, Madame Stukoy. Back to being a vampire. With some time and practice, you'll slowly gain new vampire powers, especially now that Shroudy is no longer your master. You don't have to read it cover to cover, but you may want to use it from time to time if you two encounter difficulties during your journey. As a member of the undead, you are required to return to your grave every night My and... My grave! But seriously, I know, off on a side, I'm really not dead. Ah? Uh, no, 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 Mona. It says right here, when bitten and drained by a vampire, then fed some of the vampire's own blood, the victim becomes technically and legally dead in most countries, except Nevada, where death can be annulled within 24 hours. Grave dirt! Fine, I'll get right on it! It is not your grave, per se, but you have to sleep in the coffin filled with dirt from your grave every day. That is how it works. You did bring that grave dirt with you when you escaped the castle, right? Uh, not exactly. I, uh, sort of dumped it out. 
I'm afraid you're going to have to go back to the castle and retrieve it. Back to the the castle? castle? Shush now. Something's coming in. Oh, great spirit of the ball. Show me sector 12. Madame Strigoi, who are they? Vampire hunters. Monsieur Calvin and Belcou is apprentice. Oh, why on earth did sign send them instead of Abraham? Ugh, God only knows. Oh, well, they are vampire hunters from a religious brotherhood. You can thank them for staking Baron Shroudy von Kiefer to death back by the lake. They want to stake you, too. They will not likely rest until your undead heart stops beating in your undead chest, after which time you will be 100% dead. Look, if you do not find more grave dirt before sunrise, you will not be able to return to your coffin, and I already explained how important that is. Try the Draxylvania Cemetery and Picnic Grounds for a start. It's just down the road past the lakeshore. You can't miss it. What you're saying is that if we're ever going to make it to Paris, before we can leave, we must get Mona's coffin... Then, replenish our supply of Mona's grave dirt, and we're done? Once you have the grave dirt and your coffin, you will need a wagon to carry it all and a horse to pull it. I think you can borrow the wagon from the cemetery caretaker, and I just so happen to have a line on a horse for sale in the local town of Lad's Landing just up the road from here. I grabbed this flyer while I was there. I don't have any extra money, so you'll have to work something out with the owners. Steal, uh, borrow, wagon from the caretaker, work something out with the owner of the horse, get coffin and grave dirt, check. Luckily for you, I know some Turkish smugglers in Porto Varda. They owe me a few favors from back in the old days. I got them to agree to take you on their ship, the Demeanor, a large tramp freighter bound for France. They are scheduled to leave the docks just before dawn. They will not wait for you, so you must find everything you need as quickly as possible. Grave dirt, coffin, horse, and wagon. Got it. Nothing else, right? Well, come to think of it, you should really get an insane daytime guardian before you travel long distances just to be safe. What? What? Not another thing to get. This is too much. And why exactly does he have to be insane? Yeah, at best it sounds a little unwise to travel with nutcases, especially over long distances. Come on, think about it, you two. All vampires must find a mortal living human to guard over them during the day in case the righteous brothers or their brethren discover your coffin and decide to stake you in your pajamas. An insane guardian simply works the best. For one thing, they are more easily controlled. Two, they get less grossed out by the sight of blood and corpses. And three, uh, I forget three, just trust me. They are essential to have for any sun-fearing vampire. But forget it, never mind, we are short on time. You can worry about the insane daytime guardian when you get to Paris. Let's go already. We have a long night and a lot to do. Thank you so much for your help. My pleasure, child. I will do whatever I can to help you along your perilous journey. I have a feeling this might come in handy. Madame Stugoy, may I have this bottle of ink over here? Yes, child. Knock yourself out. Frodrick, would you mind reading this for me? My crow's feet are sore. Sore my ear? Uh, All right, fine. In a nutshell, it says you can't enter homes without being invited in first. You also can't enter if they have holy symbols, garlic, red or white roses, or hawthorn branches on the entrance. Frodrick, would you do the honors? Uh, It says, in a nutshell, 
that vampires wear black cloth because it protects them from holy magic, uh, such as holy water, crosses, and the sun. Frederick, do you mind reading this for me? It says, in a nutshell, that you can bite people on the neck and drain their blood till they pass out, but you should do it when no one will see you. Have you been in Draxylvania for more than one day? Regrettably, yes. Have you craved blood even once? I like my steak rare. I'm French. Are you a child of the night? An opera starlet is never seen by day. Do you wear a ribbon around your neck to hide two fang-shaped wounds? It's the latest fashion in Paris. You passed the test, Mona. You are definitely a vampire. I passed! I did it! Wait! I am not a vampire! Tess are stupid, just like you! Your first victim. Victim? I didn't attack him. I just borrowed some thing from him that made him sleep deeply for a while. Yes, well, now that the constable is uh, resting quietly, I'll take my coffin back to Madame Strigoy's camp. says, for whom does the bell toll? It tolls for me. Ring bell for service. Sincerely, proprietor Dan Smith. Well, at least it appears that Mr. Smith has a sense of humor. I can't move up the path for some reason. What do you mean? The crosses on the gravestone, they hurt. I can't seem to approach them. Oh, boy. I was afraid of this. You're not going to be able to walk through the graveyard with all those crosses everywhere. Way. This is where the woman who was selling the draft horses lives. Ugh! Ugh, it's garlic! Ugh, it smells so bad I can't get close to it! There's no way I'll 
be able to approach the door while it's still hanging there. carry it around. It's so cold and wet. Like my nose. Feel it. Ugh, no. But I will keep this snowball in mind just in case. Let's see what's in here, shall we? Of course. Oh, the poor creature. It looks like he's broken his leg. I'd say it's more likely he's broken the law. What do you mean? That's a Draxylvanian boot on his hoof. Either his owner is using it as an anti-theft device, or the Draxylvanian police department put it on because he has too many unpaid parking tickets. Something along the lines of, get this thing off my hoof right now. Hello? Is anybody in there? Nope. No one in there. It must be safe to open. Apparently, you have never heard of the stable shed slash a massacre of 1865. No, but I'm sure I'm going to hear about it in a second. Well, not if you're going to have that attitude. Forget it. Go ahead and open it up yourself. I dare you. I want you to take a peek in here. Just as I thought. A storage shed. Hmm. That saddle blanket could be useful. But I don't want to carry it around. So I'll keep it in mind. looking into the dress shop. There's some lady racing around like crazy. Yeah, she looks pretty busy for someone whose shop is supposed to be closed. There's all kinds of things in there. Some fancy looking dresses, several bolts of cloth, and a fat guy who looks really unhappy. Maybe his corset is riding up on him and he stopped by to have it adjusted. close to the door with that cross hanging there. It's an oily vat filled with cooking grease. Certainly there are better ways to keep my hands looking young and soft without plunging them into a vat of smelly old grease. Miss, what can I do you for? Sorry to disturb you, but may I speak with you for a moment? That depends. Are you in any way associated, affiliated, related to, or working with any member of a local, regional, or national law enforcement organization, particularly those identified as being tasked with reducing or eliminating the act of human fulfillment? Human fulfillment? She means no, she is not. Well then, hello there, honey. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. How can I help you? Do you work for the salon? Work has such a negative connotation. I like to think that I live my life in the pursuit of pleasure. Mine and others. My relationship with the salon allows me to pursue these personal interests while simultaneously providing me with an ongoing source of income. 
right now I'm standing lookout for a private nail salon event going on inside. What sort of work do you do? I like to think of myself as a small event planner, or possibly a personal entertainer. In terms of the specific services I offer, that generally depends on how much my client is willing to spend. Was there something particular you had in mind? Uh-oh, Mona. That constable over there is eyeing you pretty closely. You'd better be careful, or you might get picked up for solicitation. Solicitation? Solicitation of what? Mona, you seem to be having some difficulty grasping the situation. This lovely lady here... Why, thank you! And I might say you are by far the most attractive bat I have ever encountered. You're too kind. Anyway, Mona, to put it bluntly, this woman is, uh, well, she does stuff to make people happy, especially penicillin manufacturers. Oh, I, I guess I understand. I think. Forgive me, I don't have much experience in these, um, areas. There's nothing to forgive, darling. You know, you are quite attractive. <laughs> I'm not sure what you're doing right now, but would you ever consider a career change? We offer flexible hours and an excellent benefits package. We would have to put a little more foundation on those cheeks, though I'm afraid you're looking rather pale. Sure, sounds great. I love doing nails. Where do I sign up? Whoa, Mona, trust me. This isn't the right nail salon for you. Besides, don't you want to go to Paris and sing opera? You're right, I do. But she made her life seem so glamorous and fulfilling. Do I get two weeks of vacation and ten days of sick leave? You're gonna need a lot more sick leave. What are you talking about? I'm not judging you. I'm just saying we should be discreet. Someone. There's nothing wrong with pleasant social intercourse. Why are you standing out here in the cold? You can thank Constable Bud Crane, the cop standing over there. He's not a big fan of the nail salon services. So I have to stand watch to warn the private party we are having inside in case Constable Crane decides to have a raid. Believe me, I'd rather be inside nice and warm. What private party? We'll keep this on the down low, but Burgermeister Willem Vinton and a bunch of his cronies from the next village over are having some <clears throat> political discussions in there. Very delicate ones, and they don't want to be disturbed. Disturbed by whom? The Vice Squad. Vlad's Landing Vice, which Constable Blood Crane over there is the head of, doesn't like my business practices and is constantly trying to shut me down. But we are so good at nails <laughs> that the politicians keep allowing us to reopen. Why would Constable Crane not like a nail salon? Oh, I have a bunch of theories on that. And none of them good. My leading theory is that he has a serious inferiority complex. Because his older brother Lou is such a big town hero. And overshadows Bud at every turn. So to compensate for his... <laughs> shortcomings. He's way too wound up. He really needs to get... Well, get... Uh, Relieved of his duties for harassing a perfectly harmless nail salon? Yes, exactly. If he'd go away or someone got rid of him, that would be a relief. Believe you me. Can we go inside your nail salon? Sorry, honey. No can do. Why not? The salon has been reserved by a private party. I'm doing double duty as doorman and lookout. So unless you are part of the Gothford Falls City Council, I can't let you in. May I ask your name? Certainly. Today, my name is Iris Vivienne. What do you mean by today? Your name changes? Of course. My name changes with my mood. I'm in an Iris mood today, but tomorrow I may be somebody else. My customers enjoy a certain level of variety. Might I ask your name? 
My name is Mona. Well, what a quinky dink. I use the name Mona all the time. It is a perfect name for a woman in my profession. Ah! <laughs> and what is so gosh darn funny? Nothing. That's a lovely dress. May I ask where you purchased it? But of course. I bought this dress at Madame Stoker's dress shop. She does excellent work. Although sometimes it's difficult to get an appointment with her due to Madame Stoker leading a fairly hectic life. Why is Madame Stoker's life so hectic? She has two young children who keep her very busy. And a very demanding husband who is a bit of a gluttonous louse. Although he is an excellent customer. That's all the questions I have for now. Very well. Uh, if you happen to see a lonely, wealthy man wandering about, please do send him my way. with you? Of course, Fräulein. Do you require assistance? Is that fat threatening you? No, he's actually a friend of mine, but thanks for asking. I have to say, you seem eager to help. That I am. It was my dream to be a member of the Deals, the Draxylvanian Elite Air, Land and Sea Rescue Squad, but I was unable to qualify for the service, so I had to settle for being a constable. What happened? Why did you fail to qualify? I have a condition known as FC, which stands for Fragile Coccyx. Uh, apparently, due to the occasional bout of anemia and limited access to vitamins as a child, my coccyx does not have the strength to withstand the arduous training curriculum. Why did you want to be a member of the deals? They stand for truth, justice, and the Draxylvanian way. And most importantly, they help people in need. There is also my secondary motivation of trying to escape my brother's shadow. What does your brother have to do with this? My brother was one of the first deals. On his inaugural mission, he saved an entire village from being destroyed when floods caused the spillway of the Lake Varg Dam to malfunction. Ever since then, he's been known throughout the land for his heroic deeds. Haven't you had a chance to do anything heroic? Sure. I've stopped a few pickpockets, prevented the occasional murder, and harassed that cat house across the way out of business. Nail salon, my... Where was I? Oh, yes, but I've never done anything that's been recognised. What sort of recognition are you looking for? I want the town to know me as a hero. A key to the city would be nice. But most importantly, I want them to look at me and say, There is Constable Crane. He saved somebody. If I could only help somebody truly in need. This guy is a real piece of work. What sort of person would you want to help? Perhaps an elderly person? No, I know, a child. If I could save a child from some hideous fate, the old town would sing my praises. Settle? Constable sounds like an exciting and rewarding job. It can be, but this job can also suck the life right out of you. The endless social problems and crime-ridden slums wear you down eventually? No, I mean literally. We lose half our constables each year due to blood loss from animal bites. I'm beginning to suspect it may be the work of... Uh, oh, forget it. What? Tell me. Jackalopes. Vampiric jackalopes. This guy is out of his gourd. Listen. These creatures survive on the blood of others and burrow deep into graves to sleep during the day. I think they are behind the attack of anemia that has been plaguing Draxylvania over these many years. But no one will listen, except you. You believe me, don't you? My, what lovely weather we are having. <sighs> that 
was one dream. Surely you have other dreams and aspirations. I wanted to be a member of Lake Watch, a team of Draxylvania's best-looking lifeguards. I wanted to be able to save lives and show my brother E isn't the only hero in the Crane family. Why didn't you join? I tried out. I broke every speed and strength record they had. But in the end, they said I wasn't photogenic enough. Why are you out here all alone? The Burgermeister gave the Cushy Stadium gate job to my brother Lou and stuck me with watching the nail salon. Just because Lou saved the Burgermeister's family from a pack of werewolves that attacked them during their Christmas feast. Wow! How on earth did he do that? It's no big deal. Lou just gathered some hair samples from a previous werewolf attack, then analysed them in his basement lab where he discovered some iridium-rich deposits in the fur... Lou then deduced the iridium could only come from a meteor crater, so he went up to Chillblood Crater wearing a had-stitched werewolf costume that he'd sprayed with synthetic female werewolf urine and infiltrated the pack for three weeks. During the attack, he sprayed the entire pack with liquid silver nitrate, incapacitating all of them except the leader. He then fought the pack leader on the top tower of the Burgermeister's house while the leader used the Burgermeister's daughter as a shield... Lou used psychological baiting to catch the pack leader off guard so he could slay the beast with his own silver dagger. Lou is such a glory hog, I swear. He did all that just to make me look bad so I'll get stuck out of here while he got the cushy stadium job. He is always doing that. Lou is such a manipulator. I'm Mona de Lafitte, mighty opera singer. Who are you? Constable Bud Crane at your service. If there is trouble afoot, I'm your man. Is there anything I can help you with, Fraulein? You look new in town. I was a guest of the, uh, Gina Martinelli. Until today, that is. I'm trying to get back to Paris, so I'm looking for transport down to the port tonight. Know any? No coaches come through here in the winter, and I'm afraid the old town except me is at the big game going on in the stadium. I'll suggest you wait till tomorrow afternoon, after the town sleeps off their drunken stupor. Do you know the Baron Shroudy von Kiefer? The Baron? I've never met him, but he's known around these parts for his rather unusual personality, especially around tall women. (laughs) They say his mother was even weirder. Some of the things I've heard about her would keep you up at night. It's strange Baron Shroudy's not here tonight, since he is the owner of the Vlad's Landing All Black Sports franchise. Makes me suspicious. Um, why is that? I heard a report from my cousin Otto, a glory hog himself, that the Baron's boat, clothes and a coffin were found by the late shore, but no Baron. I bet it was a gypsy witch Strigoi. Never trusted her kind. Otto was supposed to report in over an hour ago to spell me, but hasn't shown up. I bet he's passed out drunk somewhere. Just my luck. Can this not get any worse? Tell me about Vlad's Landing. Vlad's Landing? Not much to tell. It used to be a small hill town called Vlad's Lot until a rich, creepy writer named Stefan Rex moved in and founded a sports stadium. Apparently, he's a big sports fanatic. It used to be named after him until Scarlet Bovine bought the naming rights last year. Anywho, when they dammed the Varg River, it became a centre of trade for all the local villages on the lake and its tributaries and was renamed Vlad's Landing. to this writer. Ah, he went insane when he borrowed a ton of money from the old baron to fund a horrible play called Wagons. Get this, the story was about wagons coming to life, running people over and terrorising a group of people stuck in a livery stable. (laughs) It was so stupid, the play closed down during the first act. He lost it all, money, respect and his sanity. I think he's an inmate now at Dr Legume's Asylum for the Sanity Challenged. Erdy still writes for the Insanity Today magazine. A magazine by and for asylum inmates. I'm new here. 
Would you tell me about Draxylvania? Uh, Draxylvania is just a group of baronies nested high up in the Draxylvanian Alps. Uh, it is a semi-independent country within the Austro-Hungarian Empire. We're known for our odd customs, beliefs and mythologies. Like what? Well, some of the big ones are uh, our nobles only come out at night, we all use garlic way too much, cover the doors, windows, even bathe in it. Um, some neighbouring countries call us Stinksylvania because the garlic smell often wafts over their countries doing high winds. Uh, let's see, we put crosses everywhere and we're constantly being plagued by some sort of weird disease. Uh, it's either lycanthropy one year, spontaneous anemia the next, or random outbreaks of insanity and paranoia. It's as if this land was cursed by God, or the spirits of all things pure and holy. Eh, but it's home. What's in that dark alley back there? It leads to the back of the stadium and the side door. Athletes and event staff only. Other than that, just a few boxes of junk and old sports equipment and the like. Of course, it is a dark alley. And we have had a few incidents take place in there. I have been pleading with the city council to light the darn thing up, but they say their budget is taken up with a new public anti-anemia campaign. Just say no to night visitors. I like to stay near the alley entrance, just in case something happens again. Well, that is enough for now. I need to go. This will be useful. I'll take it. Use that old boomerang with that. Uh, Mona? What are you doing? I read somewhere that grunting like an animal improves your accuracy when throwing or playing tennis. I'll take your word for it. Let her rip. My name is Mona de Lafitte, and I'm inquiring about the horse that you are selling. I I'd love to help you out, but I can't right now. Is there anything I can help you with? Actually, maybe you can. You see, the door's locked, and my son threw the frickin' key out the window. Now no one can get in or out. If you help me get the door open, I'll give you the horse. Why do you talk so strangely? What are you talking about? Your accent. It's unlike anything I've ever heard. Oh, that? My husband and I just moved out here from New Jersey. I'd like to hear more about New Jersey. Sure. Like what? What's it like there? It's actually pretty nice. Especially once you get used to the pollution, overpopulation, traffic. It sounds delightful. Are there any operas there? Oh, yes. Really? That's what I miss the most. Not a day goes by here when I don't wish I could watch my soap operas. Soap operas? I guess we're not talking about the same kind of operas. Do you miss your homeland? I sure do. Living out here in the sticks don't hold a candle to life in the big city. What caused your son to act so rudely? Oh, I threatened to have that weird Baron Shroudy come over to babysit him if he didn't eat his turnips. I guess he really didn't want that to happen. Do you know where the key is now? Well, he threw it out the window so it couldn't have gone far. I 
think I've heard enough about New Jersey for now. Suit yourself. That's enough information for now. Fine by me. I'm not sure I would fit, and the glass would cut me to shreds. It's a window that's been broken from the inside. Based on the spiderweb effect created as the window was breached, the object in question was metallic, approximately 4 inches long, with a total weight not exceeding 27.5 grams. I would estimate the object in question flew no more than 23 meters. That's adjusting for a moderate wind, of course. Wow, Mona. You're either a great detective or had a distinguished career as a cat burglar before you moved on to opera. Adventurous. I'm going to fly down into the well and look around. You go do that, and I'll stand lookout for well inspectors. Scared? No. Just concerned that exploring a strange place might make me anxious, overly alert, and panicky. Uh, but scared? Never. It's frozen under the ice. There's no way for us to get it out of there. Unless, of course, you have heat vision. Oh, do I? Is that one of my special vampire powers? That depends. You aren't from Krypton by any chance, are you? No, I'm from Pelly. Heat vision is out, but you do have the power to be incredibly rude to tourists. Hmm, a bucket might be useful. I'll keep it in mind. Now this ought to melt you free. I think it must have... Frozen? You think? It was a good plan. Oh, man! Well, maybe the saddle blanket can keep the stew warm this time. anything I'm afraid sorry
Now this ought to melt you, please. Yippee! That worked! No way! I simply refuse to get my fingers messy. Help me out, Fodrick! You know about that? You found it. To be honest, I didn't think you had the smarts to ever find it. Um, thanks. I guess. Ooh. Well, let's get to the stable. I'm freezing my keister off. It's freaking cold out. There you go, Buttercup. Meet, uh, what was your name again? Modern de Lafitte, of the Parisian de Lafitte's, opera singer and par arts graduate. Yeah, that's great. Anyway, me, Mona. You belong to her now. <laughs> Quit your convention and get out of here before I sell you to the glue factory. Merci. Throw a snowball at it. Maybe I can cover it up. A snowball fight where the target can't fight back? Those are my kind of odds. You hit it pretty good and it's stuck, but it looks like the snowball isn't going to work. I don't want to carry it around. It's so cold and wet. Like my nose. Feel it. Ugh! This will add a little color to you. He looks like a charcoal flavored snow cone. Throw a snowball at it. Maybe I can cover it up. A snowball fight where the target can't fight back? Those are my kind of odds. I've 
seen better arms on a chair, but it looks like you got the job done. The black inky snowball covered it up pretty good. What's wrong, Mona? The door's open. What are you waiting for? Head on in. I can't. For some reason, I can't cross the threshold of the doorway. I wonder if this has anything to do with the fact that you are currently life-challenged. Life-challenged? Just trying to be polite. I know it's a bit of a touchy subject. Oh, you with your silly vampire theories. It's only a curse. That is, until I find a way to cure myself. Okay, so maybe the fact that you can't enter the store has something to do with the fact that you're a walking corpse. Uh, I mean, you're a vampire. Let's see what this says on the other side. Surprise, surprise! Instead of closed, it says open. Wow, that one really got me off guard. sign says I'm afraid I don't have my reading glasses y yes uh, it says yes we are open please come in I wonder how that got turned around oh well that did it Fodrick I suddenly feel different I feel I can walk into this shop now pretty sneaky sis uh, I mean Mona I'll probably regret this but May I ask you a couple of questions? Yeah, why the hell not? Why are you so rude to your wife? Sometimes you need to put a woman in her place, which is sure to be in the kitchen grabbing me another beer. Why aren't you working? I'm out on a disability. I have a mental anguish over having to work more than six straight hours. It nearly drove me mad. And I think I may have a permanent mental damage. No argument there. How come you drink so much? Have you seen my kids? <laughs> and need I say more? Don't you think you should be nicer to your wife? Ah, uh, don't you think you should be nicer to me, eh? Uh, perhaps we could continue this uh, discussion over a bottle of wine at a local tavern, I know. <laughs> Low lights, uh, music, private booth, <laughs> but lose the bat. You're disgusting. I think I better go before I do something that I'll regret. Don't worry, baby. You can do whatever you want. I promise. I won't regret it after. <laughs> Too bad Inky ate our mace. I have a desire to bury it in the top of his head. might come in handy for something. I better not take it now, but I'll keep it in mind just in case. Hello in there! Anyone else in there? No one else, just me. I don't have any hired help. What would I need them for? Excuse me, miss. Can we speak with you for a moment? A moment is about all I have. Why aren't your kids asleep? I haven't had a chance to sing to them yet. I always sing them to sleep. Unfortunately, my husband is rather demanding and 
rather hungry as well, and it's going to be a while before he finishes his dinner. I used to sing at Sepelli Opera. Perhaps I could sing for them. Would that help you? Certainly. If you can get my kids to fall asleep, then once my husband finishes his dinner, I should be able to help you out with whatever you need. Why is your husband so hungry? Good question. Apparently, sitting around on your ass all day doing nothing but drinking, yelling, and passing gas that could choke a mule generates quite an appetite. How did you meet your husband? When I was many years younger, my father accidentally ran him over with our family carriage. The magistrate ordered my father to pay for his medical expenses, but my family didn't have any money, so I agreed to live with him and work as his servant to pay off the debt. And since the two of you fell in love? No! And then my family's house burnt down, and I had no place left to go. It sounds like something out of a fairy tale that Ed Gallen Poe might have written. Have you ever thought about leaving your husband? I've thought about it ten times since you first entered the room. Unfortunately, he owns a shop and everything in it. I would have to leave penniless and without my children. Yeah, leaving penniless would definitely be bad. all those dishes in the kitchen? I had to take an extra job to pay for all my husband's food and beer. I earned a little money selling gift plates door to door and washing dishes. Without the extra income, he would eat everything and the kids would go hungry. Who is paying you to wash the dishes? I'm doing some food service work for the stadium. Tonight they're having a benefit for the Association of Drexelvanian Constables. I already finished cooking for them. In fact, I just doused my cooking fire. Now I have to wash all of their dishes. In addition to that, I have to stack and organize the gift plates in a special way so they're easier to sell door to door. I make everyone stay out of the kitchen. What are your children's names? Siegfried and Roy. I bet they get picked on a lot. True. Not the most manly names in the world, but again, my husband likes them. He thought it would toughen them up if they got picked on a lot. So far, I think it just made them more hyperactive, insensitive, and demanding. Still, gotta love them! No, you don't got to. Shh! Do you happen to have any black cloth available? Yes, I think I have some stashed away someplace. Unfortunately, I'm not going to have time to get it for you until my kids are asleep and my husband is done with his dinner. Thank you for talking with us. lullabies, many of which have been passed down for hundreds of Who let the wolves out? Who let the wolves out? I don't think they want to hear anything else. Where did your boys hear that song? They play it at the stadium all the time. It's our favorite song. Can you teach it to me? If you do, I'll be happy to sing it to you. We don't know all the words. Sing it to us or we won't talk to you anymore. Who let the wolves out? Such lovely children. <laughs> I wonder if they fit through that window. Shush, Frederick. I'm going to have to find a way to learn that song. Otherwise, I don't think these children will ever go to sleep.
My name is Mona de Lafitte. What's yours? Detective Lou Crane at your service. I'm pleased to make your acquaintance, Miss de Lafitte. How long have you been assigned to this stadium? I've been doing stadium duty for two years now, and I love it. In that time, I might add, illegal attendance has been cut by over 92%. Only 92%? You seem to be quite a responsible security guard. How is the other 8% getting past you? I've asked myself that question many times. The only thing I can conclude is that somehow they're sneaking through a side door. And where would this side door be located? And how come you haven't locked it? Well, it is locked, but somehow those pesky 8% keep getting in. I'm afraid I cannot disclose its exact location, as that would be a rather serious breach of security. It's the uh, athlete's entrance, and the Gothford United team has made me swear never to reveal its location, uh, especially to anyone from Gothford Falls. How do you like working your stadium assignment? Very much so. I get to see all kinds of games, famous athletes, and the occasional stadium concert. Why, Van Halgen themselves played here last month. That Edward Van Halgen plays himself a mean oboe. How did you earn such a cushy assignment? The position actually opened up after the 1893 championships. After the Gosford United lost the game again, the fans rioted and the old constable who had the assignment was trampled to death. So the position became available. Quite a lucky break, actually. I'm not sure the poor old guy who was trampled to death would agree with you. for the game. Sorry, madam. I'm afraid this event is only for constables, their families, and the people the constables sold their tickets to, and the scalpers they sold those tickets to, and the people who bought those scalp tickets. <laughs> this match between Vlad's Landing All Blacks and Gotham Falls United, a huge long-standing rivalry, has been sold out for weeks. Worked on any interesting cases? Oh, goodness, where do I start? I have a million ones to tell you about, all full of brilliant twists, turns, and wonderful detective work by me. <laughs> Which case you want to hear? I have all night. You won't be disappointed. Good one, Mona. How about your first case? That ought to be The sure. year was 1865, and I had just completed my four extra years in Draxylvania Detective School. Nope, you were wrong. As usual. Most young rookies do not have the privilege of being asked into detective school. But you see, I was a captain of the Junior Occult Hunters of Draxylvania Society. An organization that I started thanks in part to the money I got from a bounty that practically fell into my lap. Sure? Yes. yes. Well then, if you must go rest, you must. Any more questions for me before you go and uh, rest? Thank you. I need to go now. Good evening to you then. the door that leads to the back of the stadium. It almost looks as if we could squeeze through those bars. Hmm. I think I might be able to fit through there. I don't want you to get dirty or break a nail. Let me try first. Plus, I'm stronger as a bat than you are. Dang. Sorry, Mona. I couldn't quite squeeze through. Almost, though. Almost. Full 
Isaac, would you mind diving into that grease for me? I kind of like the greased look. Might make me look cool. Uh, but what for? I don't know yet. But I think a greased up full drink might come in handy. You don't know how happy I am to hear that last statement. Oh, hush now. Mona, you're going to owe me for this. I smell like a French fry. Well, we are trying to get back to France. All right. I'll go get greased up and try to squeeze through. That did it. I made it through. Uh, I got a bit of bad news, though. The door is barred and locked from the inside. I won't be able to unlock it. You're going to have to squeeze through yourself. But then I'll end up covered with oil. If you're looking for sympathy, keep right on looking. Now transform yourself into a bat and get that purple booty of yours in here. We're in, but I'm not sure you should have drained that guy in the locker room until he passed out. But I had to. He made me transform into a human for the back. Yeah, but he was Gotham's false star player. They were favored to win, but now... Oh, who cares about this silly game? Besides, the outcome of this game won't affect us anyway. Okay. Bam Leader's playlist. It looks like he's written down a list of songs he's going to play. Check and see if Who Let the Wolves Out is on there. If he's going to play it, we can wait around and listen for it so we can learn the song. Good idea. Hmm. No, wait. I see it near the top of the list. Oh, but it's been scratched out. Typical Team Lafitte luck. He played it already. Excuse me, sir. Might I speak with you? Why, certainly, miss. T. Milton Meininger always has time for a beautiful woman. Ah! Hey, Mona. Get a load of this guy, will ya? This clown thinks he's a ladies' man. Do you happen to know the song, Who Let the Wolves Out? T. Milton Meininger knows all songs and can conduct every one of them with a grace and style that has made him recognizable all through Draxylvania. Do you take requests? Regretfully, I do not, dear lady. I play only the songs I have chosen in a specially prepared program. After deciding what sort of magic I will work upon the crowd, I create a play order for all of my songs on my playlist. And from there, I never alter the program nor improvise. I wonder if this guy is related to Constable Crane. They both have great posture thanks to a large stick that appears to be... Shh. Would you be willing to change your program for me? <laughs> you are rather beautiful. Perhaps I could play you a song or two back at my apartment after the event is over, hmm? Of course, I would need to change into something, shall we say, more comfortable for me and more <laughs> enticing for you? Okay, that's about all I need to hear from you. This might be useful if only... Madam, I'm going to have to ask you to remove your hands from my playlist immediately. Nobody touches the playlist of T. Milton Meininger. Mona, looks like there's no way we're going to be able to do anything with this playlist until we find some way to distract them. Hi there, 
this. What can I do you for? I was wondering if you might do us a favor. I guess that depends on what the favor is. My favors usually cost money. There is a man conducting the constable's orchestra, and we're very interested in reviewing his song list. Unfortunately, he won't let us see it. If you could distract him for us, perhaps we would be able to modify his list. I'm afraid I can't afford to leave the area. I have to stand lookout for our private nail salon party going on inside. The Burgermeister paid me specifically to stand guard and watch Constable Bud Crane over there, so no can do, honey. Can we pay you for your time? Perhaps we can exchange favors. As I mentioned before, Constable Crane over there is very much cramping our outfit style. If you can find some way to convince him to leave his post, I could leave for a while without worrying and distract this band leader of yours. How can we get the constable off the street? I have no idea. We've tried bribing him without much success, but as some sort of high and mighty code of ethics, he's always trying to look like a hero. <laughs> His brother, Lou's the real hero. Saves people from drowning in fires all the time. Been decorated five times. But is always in his shadow. But both of them are a real pain in the... That is enough. Thank you for the information. That's all the questions I have for now. Very well. Uh, if you happen to see a lonely, wealthy man wandering about... Please do send him my way. overlooking the alley. There's sure are a lot of people in there. Yeah, based on all the noise, I'd say they're partying like it's 1899. It appears to be a rather dark and deep access point to the sewer system. It's called a manhole. No, I don't think so. Fodrick, you may not want to do this. In fact, you will probably hate me for asking this, but, well, if you don't terribly mind, I mean, if you don't mind terribly, uh... What is it already? Will you dress up and drag for me with the baby dress we just saw in the dress shop window? Please? What for? I don't know yet, but you dressed up like a little girl might be useful at some point. Oh, jeez. Let me think about it. Okay, fine. But it better be a really, really good idea. Important. And not some joke. No joke. And I promise no joking. Well, maybe a little joking. Forget it. No, 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 no. I promise no joking. Pinky swear? Pinky swear. All right, fine. But I just know I will never live this down, and I will only do it once. After that, never again. Ever. It appears he's patrolling the area around the entrance to that dark alley. For 
Frederick? I just had a thought. Uh oh. Duck for cover. No, seriously. Remember the little baby dress we saw in the dress shop window? Yes. The one you said might fit me? Yes. I was thinking we should lure this constable away from his post and then I could. Um. Uh, I could. Drain him a bit till he passes out? I see where you're going. You hide in the alley back there, put me in the dress, and I lure him in there with some phony catch like I'm being attacked? Yes, exactly. Will you wear a dress for me, Frederick? Oh, boy, you owe me big time. But okay, just this once. I will never put on a dress for you again. Ever. Got that? Ever again. Yes, I promise never to ask you to do it again. I swear on my own grave. Not sure how good an oath that is, but fine. You go hide, and I'll go get the dress. I'll lure him with cries for help, then you, uh, well, you just bite him. Not too hard. Whatever, not too hard. Then Miss Floozy over there will be happy. Great, let's do it. Why do I have a feeling it isn't going to be that easy? in case I have a baby girl. Good evening, little girl. Save you. Hang on, little girl, I'm coming. It's the constable Bud Quain looking for the lost little girl. And I don't think he can be seen by those people in the windows. I hate to do it, but if I must, I must. Ah! Wow, Mona. He's out like a light. I hated to do it. But then again, it seemed kind of fulfilling. And I'm in a much better mood. Starting to get used to this biting and draining thing. You didn't, uh, drain him all the way. I don't think so. Jack, is he still breathing? Yep, still breathing. Your record is murder-free. Two and oh. Good job. We'll make a full-fledged and moral vampire out of you yet. This all-access badge will be quite useful. Will this all-access pass help? I think all the constables working security for the game have one. My, my, you are resourceful. I could use a girl like you. So you won't change your mind about the job offer? Oh, well, it's, uh, I, uh, awfully nice offer, but I, um, you, you see, I... Ah, don't hurt yourself, honey. I get the picture. This pass will work. Let's go. Hello, Mr. Van Leader. Hello yourself, madam. 
It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I must say, I simply love a man in uniform. That's interesting to hear. I myself have a thing for women without a uniform on, or anything else for that matter. You really are a silver-tongued devil, aren't you? Do you still have a lot of songs to perform? There are still plenty of songs to be played. However, as busy as I am, I have to say that you just moved to the top of my to-do list. Oh, how romantic. Yes, you're quite the looker. I'm a little new to the area. Perhaps you could give me directions to your apartment? Aren't you being a little bit forward? Is that not okay, my delicious little crumpet? Did you call me a strumpet? Uh, No, I said crumpet, but if you want to identify yourself as a strumpet, that works for me. (laughs) I'd also be willing to accept floozy or hussy as well. You're clearly a big tease. And you are clearly a big jerk. Speaking of big, do you moonlight as a cantaloupe thief? I don't need to hear this from some kind of band dork. Stick that, that stick in your ear. Madam, it is called a baton, and I will play only when I am good and ready. Perhaps you should get back to your obvious profession and leave good, upstanding men like me alone. And disease free. Maybe you should go take a long walk off a short pier, you pathetic excuse of a wannabe musician. That was the worst music I have ever heard. Shut up, you harlot. You shut up, you ignoramus. A big word. Did you learn that when you <clears throat> took lessons from a local college professor? Where did you get your hat? Did you tell somebody you wanted to wear something that resembled a fuzzy toilet on your head? (laughs) You should talk. Where did you get that dress? Not a virgin, Megastore? Harlots are us? Shouldn't you be getting home? Your mother is calling you. Scumbag. Streetwalker. Harlot. Nincompoop. Tart. Jackass. Wench. Idiot. Hustler. Geek. Floozy. Jerk. Hussy. Dirtbag. Courtesan. Impotent. Yeah, that should do it. Hag. Now we just need to get back to work. Slovenly Retard troll. maroon. Don't ever call, girl. Scumbag. Streetwalker. Fortwick, can you do something to stop her? That wipe. Harlot. Your wish is my command. Okay, lady. Time for some serious face time. You and me. Oh my! Oh, the bat problem has gotten bad around here lately, hasn't it? Though I am not sad to see her go. Too bad. Seemed for a while there my evening was shaping up nicely. Oh well, back to the music. Now, what are we playing next? I seem to have forgotten. Hmm. Oh! Who Let the Wolves Out? A classic. Ready, boys? Send work! Thank you, Fordling! No problem, Mona. Now listen up. Here comes the song. again, boy. Did you learn how to sing the song? Indeed I did. Would you care to hear it? Yes, yes, yes! Very well. Here goes. Who let the wolves out? Wolf, wolf, wolf. Who let the wolves out? Wolf, wolf, wolf. That did it, Mona. It put him to sleep. 
Who knew that cheesy Oompa anthems made good children's lullabies? Madame Stoker, I am pleased to report that your children are now sleeping. Oh, thank you very much. You'll have to tell me what song you sang them. The boys can't eat if they're asleep. I can finally put out one of the stoves. Could you perhaps help us now? I'm sorry, but I'm still serving my husband his dinner. Mona, if we don't find a way to stop Mr. Gluttony over there from eating, she's never going to have time to get us the cloth. Ah. <sighs> to the dress shop. I can see smoke pouring out of the top of two smokestacks up there. Those chimneys look pretty small. Santa Claus is going to need to go on a diet before he'll be able to squeeze down those. Let's take a look up there, Fodrick. Maybe there's a way in. I'm game. the fire is out. Let's see where this goes, Fodrick. Sure. I always wanted to visit the exotic and secretive world of the chimney sweep. It looks like graffiti. What does that say? Santa was here. I wonder what that means. Oh. Didn't you hear? The Vlad's Landing Chimney Sweep Guild wanted to start charging Santa a toll for all the scuff marks he left in the chimneys. It was this big thing where they went back and forth at City Hall and in editorials in Weasel News. Never happened. But after that, Santa was here, tags started showing up in all the chimneys, sort of in your face to the chimney sweeps. Wow. Vindictive little elf, isn't he? It looks like the skeleton of a bat. Uncle Rudy. You know him? Yeah. The last time I saw him, we were out flying together, and he was complaining about being cold. He said he had a great idea on how to get warm, but he didn't elaborate. So, your uncle flew into a chimney and waited until somebody started the fire? Hey, nobody ever accused Uncle Rudy of being the sharpest tool in the shed. Let's see what this does. right now, but it's good to know it's there just in case. Hmm, with Mina busy cleaning up there, now would be a good time to make sure she stays in there. Something has fallen in front of the door. 
What are you? I am your worst nightmare come true. A woman with power. Not political or social power, but black magic, which is power nonetheless. No, 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 please, please don't. I'll do anything you ask. Just don't start voting. Then do this. Be a good husband to your wife and treat her fairly. If I find out that you have said so much as a single insult, I'm going to come back here and finish you off. And go get a job, for goodness sake. Help your wife and kids out. But uh, my mental anguish, what kind of a job could I do? Get a job in a field you know well and love, and I'm sure your mental anguish will be gone in no time. But I'd worry about the current anguish you're about to go through. Clam a bake. Oh, my. Excuse me. It must have been all that beer he drank. I feel a little... Uh, oh, tipsy. Next time, see if you can say the whole alphabet. I think Minna has suffered enough. I agree. Let her out so she can bask in the glory of our handiwork. All her distractions are asleep. Or passed out due to lack of blood. Two, three! Whoa! Thank you! Something fell in front of... Oh my god! What? What? Bruno! Bruno? Uh Uh-oh! What? Oh, we... uh... He's asleep! Thank god! Thank you, O merciful Lord above! You have blessed me far more than you will ever know. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. (laughs) Thank you! Uh, Mina? I hate to interrupt your prayer of thanks, but I was wondering if you have time to go down to your cellar and find those bolts of... Lots of black cloth! (laughs) Of course, my good friend. Anything for you. Anything! Yippee! Anything for you! Let him run down and get it! Happy days are here again! The skies are blue! What's with that face? I don't know. It has this feeling of warmth and accomplishment inside, and it seems to be making me smile, and I feel good. What is that? Because you inadvertently did a good deed. It happens once in a while, but don't you worry. It'll pass. All you have to do is do something selfish, and pop, it goes away. Trust me on this. Really? Okay, because this is too weird. It took me a while. I I had to pull down the enormous fort the kids made with my cloth bolts, but I found it. Twenty yards of my finest velvety black, and it's all yours for free for all your help you've given me. Wow, thank you so much. This will be perfect. Well, good luck. We're off to tell you. Ah! There, that worked. Probably used to move coffins throughout the graveyard. Once we find your grave and get some dirt, we should take the wagon with us. right now, but I might later. I remember where it is in case I need to use it. This might come in handy, but I'm not carrying it around. I'll keep it in mind. I might need 
leave that, but I can't carry it around with me. I'll keep it in mind. It looks like a map of the graveyard. That should tell us exactly where your grave is, Mona. Let's go check it out. Let's see if I can find my grave. It's probably in the area reserved for famous entertainers and singers. Yeah, right. There sure are a lot of dead people buried around here. Do you see my grave anywhere, Fordwick? Yep, got it. It looks like your grave is in quadrant A113. You were originally buried between the graves of Jay Hoffa and my hopes and dreams for the future. Now that we know where it is, we can go get some of my grave dirt. <laughs> Hello again, <laughs> my beautiful dark swan. Shrouty, no! Well, look what the cat coughed up. Joke all you want, you insipid little rodent. You're going to need more than a sense of humor to escape my trap. I've just locked the door and taken the key. I'm afraid you are trapped. I'm never going back to that castle and I'll never love you. Try and get that through your thick head. Wouldn't you agree it's more like a gaseous head? Whatever. I would rather die than spend one more night with you living in that castle. You say you would rather die, hmm? Well, we shall see. I shall give you a couple of hours to ponder your fate. I'm sure when I return, you will be much more agreeable with my most generous offer and return with me to the castle. But for now, as punishment for your attitude, I shall leave you here. <laughs> when I return, I expect to find that you have adopted a more appropriate attitude. It's a fire for the furnace. The fire has enough fuel to burn for hours. It's a locked door to the outside. It's a water basin. It collects water that drains from the roof. It's currently empty. stupid enough to let Shroudy transform me into a vampire, but I am smart enough to know that I shouldn't be sticking my hand into a fire. Look at that, Vodrick! The fire is roaring now! Do it again! Sorry, Fodrick, but I'm all out of perfume. Once I tip this over, the ice will at least be at the foot of the door. Timber! this under the door. It should give us a few inches of open space. Good! I bet I could get the tip of this shovel red hot in this fire. I don't need to do it now, but I'll remember this idea for later.
Now might be a good time to heat up that shovel and slide it under the door. Oh, Mona, that worked pretty good. The hot shovel melted the ice and formed a cool little puddle. You aren't so ditzy after all. And you are as rude as ever. A bellows full of water might be useful. I'll keep that in mind. I'm going to fill this with water. Bellows, the quicker picker-upper. Looks like we have a way out now. Let's get out of here before Shroudy comes back. We positively identified the location of your grave. Let's go get us some dirt. We don't have a horse with us, but since it's such a short distance, I should be able to pull the cart. That superhuman undead strength of yours is coming in pretty handy. See, Mona, being a vampire isn't all bad. It's bad enough, trust me. And since I am a vampire, we'd better go get some of my grave dirt. If I don't have it to line my coffin, I may not survive the night. Would it help motivate you if I yelled mush when you start pulling the cart? Would you still be able to fly if I pulled your wings off? I think the answer to both of those questions is no. Anyway, let's grab a couple of those boxes and head over to your grave. We got a little digging to do. Mona, didn't I say we had some digging to do? I'd love to help, really. But you are doing such a good job, I, I don't really get in your way. I'm not sure how much dirt we need, but I already have one full box loaded in the wagon. That should be. No, you'll never escape me. <laughs> what was that? I got a bad feeling about this. Shroudy! I have your precious black cloth, <laughs> and I know for a fact that there is none left in all of Vlad's landing. <laughs> Without being able to cover the gravestone, <laughs> you'll never be able to pull the wagon out of here. I hate to admit it, Mona, but he's right. Hey, apparition boy, I thought you loved her. If she can't get her grave dirt back to her coffin by the time the sun rises, she'll die. If I can't have her, then nobody shall. I would rather be dead forever than spend one additional second of my life anywhere near you. So long, my love. I will see you in the afterlife. Mona, we got a little bit of a predicament here. I'm not strong enough to pull the wagon, and you can't do it if the gravestones are exposed. Fodrick, do you think you could steer the wagon? You know me. I'm always up for trying something new. Just let me know when you're ready for me to steer it. I probably should bring it along, but... Nah. I have it, Fodrick. You said you could steer it, right? Yep, I think I can handle this old jalopy. Great! You 
will steer and I'll push. Since we are high up on this hill, you should be able to gain enough speed to drive the wagon out of the graveyard down the road and right up to Madame Strigoi's camp. And then I'll just fly out far away from the crosses. Brilliant. Who says opera stars are dumb as doornails? Doornails have got nothing on you. Thanks, Frederick. Okay, are you ready? I was born ready. Although, if truth be told, I am feeling just a tad bit apprehensive about this. I'm sure you'll do fine. Just do me a favor and be careful. It's nice to know you care. With those boxes of grave dirt. For a second there, I thought you were concerned about my well-being. Oh, don't be such a wuss. If things get hairy, just fly away. Of course, if you do that, you will be sentencing me to death. So... No pressure. Ready? Go for it. Find it already! What is the freaking hold up? What did the Cabal do? Send the stupidest vampire hunters in the history of all mankind? Find it already! No, no moron! You already looked there! Um, uh, Monsignor? Uh, we already looked there. Twice. Oh, pipe down, you walking stillbirth! I know what I'm doing! I'm just. just being thorough! Standard cabal procedure. Standard procedure? Standard procedure? Standard procedure? My arm! This is so frustrating. That's it. I'm just going to have to break the curse and just go in there. My arm. What? What? What manner of being dares to challenge Madame Strigoi? Hmm? if I do say so myself. High five. Hi, what? You raise your hand like so and slap it together. Why? <laughs> Madame Strigoi! We heard a scream. Huh? Oh, oh, there you are. No, no, I'm fine. I, I just like to scream randomly once in a while. Let's me know I'm still alive. <laughs> okay. Hmm. I don't know. Oh, pish posh. Anyway, we did it. We have all the things we need for this ship. I wanted to thank you for all your help and... No, no need. But I want to... No, I mean, no need for all that now. Dr. Riga Mortis, a brilliant doctor, an old friend, sent me a message saying he can cure you of your vampirism. But he must do it tonight, when all the stars are aligned. <laughs> stars all aligned? What does that have to do with Quite anything? You. Really? Where? How is it? Now. Go now before it is too late. He said come to his lab... In the windmill, just past the dam. Follow this road down to the gorge by the end of the lake. Trust me, <laughs> you can't miss it. <laughs> well, okay. If he's your friend. Yes, yes, long-time friends. Old poker buddies. Now go! No more talk! Quickly! Bye-bye! Au revoir! Goodbye! Au revoir! Yes, yes, go off to my good friend, Dr. Rigor Mortis. <laughs> He'll know just what to do to you. <laughs> and then I, Shroud Ivan Kiefer, will be your only hope for salvation. <laughs> You'll be glad to see me then. Yes, you will. You'll appreciate 
appreciate those shrouded in, won't you? <laughs> Thanks for watching this episode, and as usual, leave a comment down below, subscribe to more video updates, and share this on your Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and all the, all the social medias, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and to turn on the notification bell to stay up to date on my YouTube channel. And if you guys want to help me out in some shape or form, I do have a Patreon account down below in the description box. And as usual, thank you for watching everybody, and have a pleasant day. Bye-bye.